Hello, hello. My name is Kim Goldtom, and I'm a certified master wellness coach through the International Association of Wellness Professionals, as well as the founder of the Empowered Living for Superwomen program. I'm so excited to be here with you today and to be sharing with you how to reduce Zoom fatigue. We've all been hearing about it. We've all experienced it. It's like, oh my gosh. So if you are looking to get a little bit more clarity on how to reduce this and how to actually be able to focus and learn, retain more out of a Zoom call, meeting, workshop, whatever the case may be, then you are in the right place at the right time. So why do we get Zoom fatigue? Here's why we get Zoom fatigue. We are staring at that little video camera dot on our computer, on our phone, on our tablet, and we're focusing so hard on that and we're trying to make sure, how does my hair look and how does my, my eyes look and how does my, my you know, shoulders look and how does this, and I'm looking over at this coworker and I'm looking at this one, but then I'm also looking at the chat box and I'm trying to determine, do I need to respond? How do I respond? Is it best verbally? Do I unmute myself? Do I mute myself, right? There are a thousand things going on behind the scenes in our mind while we are trying to be present in a Zoom meeting. Wow, there's so many things that we're trying to do and accomplish on top of the meeting. So what can you do to reduce some of that Zoom fatigue and get a little bit more energy back in? Well, one thing you can do is standing. If you have the ability to use a stand-up desk or have some sort of tripod so you can go ahead and stand while looking at the video camera, believe it or not, that helps reduce fatigue. So why does that help reduce fatigue? Well, number one, your body is doing something different besides just 100% focus on Zoom. So your body is actually increasing circulation oxygen levels are moving, right? You've got movement, you've got flow, your, and your body is focused on doing something else. So it's not putting all the energy into the Zoom. And by doing that, you actually have the ability to process more. And it also increases metabolism. So you also have the ability to not feel as sleepy. So that's one way. So what if stand-up desk isn't your preferred option or not something that's going to be possible for you? That's okay. Don't worry. I've got two other tips that are going to work. The other one is hydration. So water. When you drink water, right, what does water do? It helps, again, with blood flow, getting nutrition throughout the body, getting oxygen throughout the body. So we, again, are getting that focus, that clarity, and we're not getting just kind of in that stuck mode. So water hydration can go a long way. I'm gonna throw in a few links in the description so you have those as reference as well regarding stand-up desks and hydration and how that can make an impact in increasing circulation and oxygen, which will keep you wide awake and prevent you from having as much Zoom fatigue. I'm not saying we're gonna eliminate Zoom fatigue completely, because some people are on it seven, eight hours a day. I get it, that's a lot, but we can minimize the fatigue we've got. So what's the next one? Sensory fidget toys. Have you ever seen those spinners that the kids were playing with? They were such a hot item a few years ago. They're great for adults. All different kinds of fidget toys. If you're one of those who has one of those pens and you go click, 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 you might not even realize that you were using your pen as a fidget toy. And when your body, again, you're doing multiple tasks here. So <laughs> you're, again, you're not putting all the focus into the Zoom, um, but you are, of course, still being present and learning and digesting the information you're hearing. But there has been several studies that show if you're playing with a sensory toy, children as well as adults, you can actually benefit from reduced fatigue while learning a few extra layers deeper. And I do have an article from Scientific American that I'm gonna include in the description below so you can read a little bit more about that. But it has been found that when someone is, you know, using that uh, sensory object or maybe they're even knitting, right? It helps a person stay focused 
and on a task longer without losing as much energy. So I hope you find some benefit from one of these three ideas, or even maybe all three. Test them out next time you're on Zoom and see how it goes, right? Simple little ideas, simple little tricks. And I'd love to hear from you. What kind of ideas and tricks have you found to help prevent your Zoom fatigue these days? Well, thank you so much, and I look forward to talking with you next time. Have a great and wonderful day. Bye-bye.